Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'd first of all like to thank the organizers for um, inviting me to speak at this meeting. And to a large extent, the main reason I'm here is that Neziswa is very, very persistent. <laughs> I must be honest, uh, because I, uh, I felt I'm probably not the best uh, person to speak about this, because as much as I have a lot of experience in grant funding specifically, um, I, um, the, the topic I felt is much bigger than just my limited experience within the South African context. But um, having said that, um, you see the topic that I was given. Um, just to give you um, the context from which I'll, I'll be speaking, um, as Ashley mentioned, I'm a program manager um, at, the South of, at the Strategic Health Innovation Partnerships Unit of the MRC, and primarily responsible for um, grant funding. And um, for the past 10 or so years, ever since I left university, really, I've been involved in, in the management of grants. So what I'm going to talk to you about today, I'm going to, um, I think my talk follows quite nicely from, um, from Prof. Nurendas, and that I'm going to talk a little bit more in the South African context and primarily from the MRC's um, uh, participation and, and, and grant funding to a large extent. And then I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit to what I am aware of by virtue of the role I play in grant funding in terms of what is happening on the African continent um, grant funding. So I'll give you a little bit of background in terms of grant funding within um, the Medical Research Council, what it is, um, what funding is available, who decides what will be um, what be, will be the focus areas, or at least on what basis we decide um, on the focus areas, and then I'll go into the main thrust of the of the question in terms of applications, who applies for funding, and who gets um, who gets that funding. Okay, so the Medical Research Council, um, as we all know, has been in existence since 1969, and its primary role um, is to uh, promote the improvement of health and quality of life of the population of South Africa. And this we do by um, supporting research, development, and technology transfer. And we primarily fund um, research and we conduct research as, um, as, as the council. So we fund research from um, within and outside the, the council. Um, and primarily our funding comes from the South African government um, via the Department of Health, and we also have a number of strategic partnerships that I'll talk about a little bit later that contribute to our funding pool. Um, so I said we'll talk about what we focus on. Um, this is a paper that was published in the Lancet a few um, years ago, which basically shows that um, showed that South Africa is facing a quadruple burden of disease. Um, we have serious um, challenges in the area of maternal, newborn, and child health. We have about one percent of the global burden. And if you compare um, our country in terms of um, our economic standing, we actually have uh, almost three times the average um, compared to other countries of a, of a similar standing. And obviously we all know about the burden of um, HIV, AIDS, and TB. Um, and then we also have the issue of violence and injury, which I suppose that's one of the reasons this unit is, is, is driving today's colloquium. And uh, we have a rising, bur rising burden of non-communicable diseases in the country. Um, having that in mind, um, this is what the government expects of, of the MRC. We have to um, do research that will help increase life expectancy. We have to um, reduce maternal and child mortality rates. We have to combat HIV, AIDS, and TB. And obviously, we have to strengthen um, the effectiveness of the health system, and that takes a number of, 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 um, of, of um, it's, it's a multi-pronged approach. <coughs> so um, with all of that in mind, the MRC has chosen to focus on the top 10 causes of death in the country. And this, um, this data comes from research that was done um, uh, by, that was led by our burden of disease unit with, um, with other partners. Um, the 10 main causes of 
death in the country, if you look between 1997 and 2012, although there have been some shifts in terms of uh, ranking between the diseases, in reality, the top 10 causes of death have not really changed in the last, um, in the last few decades. Um, obviously, HIV and AIDS um, come up at the top. If you look at 1997, we have um, HIV and AIDS at 14.5%. In 2012, it's still at the top at 29.1%. And that may not necessarily reflect an increase. It, may, it primarily probably reflects more of, a, of an increase in, in availability of data. Cerebrovascular disease, second on the list. We've got interpersonal violence in 1997 at number three. That has gone down a little bit, but it's still there um, in, in the top 10. But in reality, the purpose of the slide is simply to show that that's where the MRC focuses our research funding. We don't have unlimited resources, obviously, so we have to decide um, what will be a priority. Okay, um, with that in mind, these are the strategic goals of the MRC, um, primarily to make sure we administer health research effectively and efficiently, lead the generation of new knowledge, support innovation and technology development to improve health, so make sure that research moves from the lab um, to come up with solutions that actually make an impact. And underlying all of that is um, um, the focus on building capacity um, for long-term sustainability of the country's health research. As I said, um, the MRC funds research both um, internally as well as um, externally, primarily at universities. We have primarily two streams of funding. So we have what we call core funding, and these are programs that are primarily funded purely on the funds that we receive from the Department of Health. Um, so we have intra and extramural units, um, the flagship program, self-initiated research program, collaborating centers, um, and the research capacity development program. And then we have what I've termed strategic partnerships, and this uh, primarily covers um, research programs that we fund in partnership with other partners. If you look at that list, um, so I'll start off with the strategic health innovation partnerships. Um, I'll tell you a little bit later about it in my talk, but that's um, an initiative that was started by the Department of Science and Technology in collaboration with the Medical Research Council. And its focus is primarily on development of new um, vaccines, drugs, and um, diagnostics and medical devices um, with the aim of focusing on the key um, disease areas in South Africa and Africa. And it's primarily focused on product, um, product development. And we have um, the Grand Challenges South Africa program, which is um, funded by the, by the Medical Research Council in partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We have a partnership with the Newton Fund, which is based in the United Kingdom. Obviously, we have the NIH MRC partnership. Uh, we have... Um, partnership with um, the South MRC India grant program, which is facilitated by the Department of Science and Technology. Um, most recently, we have the, a partnership that was started with um, Sudan, which was again facilitated by the Department of, um, of Science and Technology. Um, I think the key thing from this slide is that, to take away from this, is that primarily our strategic partners are from outside of the African continent. And that relates directly back to what Thomas um, outlined here, that funding for research in Africa primarily, primarily comes from outside of the continent. South Africa, I think, is the, the one country on the continent that is putting significant funding towards research. Um, that therefore may, means that if we're looking for partners on the continent, even if the research is going to be is going to happen in, in in Africa, leveraging funding, we have to go um, we have to go, go outside the continent. I'll talk a little bit about the Grand Challenges Africa program a little bit later, which is one of the recent initiatives. So I'm going to. Um, 
zoom in on a couple of um, of the on a few of the programs um, that I mentioned before, just to now highlight what is happening within each of those programs in terms of who applies and who gets the funding. The self-initiated research program is one of the programs of the MRC that has been running for um, quite a few years, and it's. Um, its key focus is to support health research more broadly, you know, um, that is beyond MRC units. And its primarily focus is to support the development of new research areas and research careers. Um, and there isn't much bias in terms of the research topic because, as it says, self-initiated research. So questions, it's more blue sky. Um, let me put it that way, blue sky research. So it's like seed funding. So if you look at what's happening in terms of who applies um, for funding um, from the SIR, this is data that our unit collected, um, analyzed over the last um, few years. Unfortunately, we don't have the data from the last year or so. But the trend in reality hasn't changed much. So this is, um, these are the institutions that apply. This is where um, um, ap applications categorized by institutions. So if you look at this, you'll see um, is there a pointer. Okay, there you go. If you look at this chart, you'll see the majority of applications come from UCT, <coughs> University of Stellenbosch, UKZN, VETS, and UP. And immediately, you know, from that, that is primarily, you know, institutions that were historically advantaged. I'm talking about applications here. This is communicated to all institutions at the same time. And actually, because it's been going for a number of years, everyone knows every year the MRC will publish um, a call for self-initiated research. And remember I mentioned there is, this is meant to stimulate new research ideas. So in general, it'll say HIV and AIDS, and people can come up with whatever topic they're interested in in that space. Now we look at the awards. Um, thus, as you can see, this reflects, I mean, just take University of Cape Town, for example, over 60 applications came from the University of Cape Town over in, in 2012, about 18. So I think the key thing from this is just to show that the, the awards obviously follow the trend in terms of applications. The more applications an institution puts in, the more likely they will get more what awards and therefore more funding. Um, and then I just pulled this out in terms of race. I don't have a slide that shows you know, the uh, applications by race, but I mean you can generally infer from the, from the application. We know what's happening at the different institutions. But if you look at this, this is who um, was funded under the program. So you'll see the numbers are higher, but this is what was in the system in a particular year. Uh, the blue graphs represent African researchers, um, red colored researchers, green Indian researchers, and the purple represent white researchers. So you'll see um, that predominantly the grant holders, um, you, you see the picture. There's definitely some shift over the last few, over the last few years in the, in the um, white um, race group in terms of the number of awards. Uh, but predominantly the grant funding is going to that place. Then a little bit on the strategic health innovation partnerships. I won't spend much time on this because um, um, I have limited time, but basically this is just, um, I've, I've mentioned this before, what the purpose of the strategic health innovation partnerships unit is, more product development. Um, and you'll see here, similar picture, UCT, um, these are the, the RFAs that we've run um, in, the, in the last couple of years. UCT, more applications, Stellenbosch University, and um, VITS. When you look at, um, I'm trying to see uh, some of the historically disadvantaged universities, the UWCs, you've got much um, fewer applications coming from those. Now this is the program I was talking about that I'm primarily responsible for, the Grand Challenges um, South Africa program. Again, if you look at the applications, we've only run one RFA. It was focused on maternal and child health. 
Um, again, you see the applications primarily come from um, the previously advantaged universities. We made, we had about 54 applications for this and we made four awards. Two of them we gave to um, SMU and one to a private company, Life Assay Diagnostics, and uh, one to Virts Health. There's just an outline of um, the um, grants again um, and, and at the MRC by race and, and by institution shows the same picture, you know, primarily to the um, UCT, US historically advantaged universities. Um, so some of the initiatives that the MRC has been involved in in the last couple of years um, to, you know, to start funding more in historically um, disadvantaged institutions. Uh, in 2015 and 2016, um, MRC made some funding available specifically to um, SMU and um, Walter Sisulu universities, which are universities that also have medical schools associated to them. Um, the SIRs, um, there was an introduction of the transformation score and uh, prioritization of early to mid career researchers. The transformation score, I won't go into too much detail, um, but basically what happened is applications were reviewed as they would be normally in terms of, um, in terms of scientific merit, and then those applications that qualified, um, the um, applications that came from historically disadvantaged um, institutions then um, were um, qualified for a higher score, for example, than um, those that came from um, um, whites you know, the in, in whites and, and, and uh, other advantaged individuals. Um, Grand Challenges South Africa already mentioned there was a specific focus there to try and support um, research in, in um, historical, um, in HDI schools. Um, the Newton call, there was an, an, a specific focus again there on making sure that some researchers from previously um, disadvantaged groups were funded. Um, a capacity building, um, capacity development programs, there's a focus there again on, um, on, on prioritizing historically disadvantaged individuals. Okay, this slide just shows in terms of, um, shows um, where the funding goes in terms of um, training, training grants, um, MD, PhD, and internship programs. I think you can see from here. Um, in, each of the, um, in each of the categories, meaning clinicians um, and interns, that there's, um, um, there's definitely more focus on black and um, um, black colored um, and, um, and Indian um, scientists in terms, of, um, in terms of awards of the grants. Okay, just a little bit, I think Thomas covered quite a bit of, quite a bit of this, but I wanted to talk to you um, very quickly about one of the initiatives that I'm um, intimately involved in. And this is the Ac Alliance for Accelerating Excellence in Science in Africa. It's um, hosted by the African Academy of Science at NIPAD. And really its purpose is to try and um, increase capacity, research capacity on the continent, and also to try and um, bring in uh, more research um, from, you know, to, to, to lobby for more research funding from African governments. It's the host of the Grand Challenges um, Africa program, and it is also dri recently driving the establishment of what is called CARI, Coalition for African Research and Innovation. But the key thing here is that the major funders of this are not African governments, even though NIPAD is one of the um, supporters and drivers of the initiative. Major funders of these initiatives are the Wellcome Trust and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I've mentioned some of our partnerships in terms of the African continent, and we also contributed to the development of the Africa Health Research and Innovation Strategy. Um, in summary, the MRC is a major funder of um, medical research in South Africa. We have, as Thomas said, we have very few counterparts on the continent. Um, Co-funding is more readily available from outside Africa, and as I've shown, funding predominantly goes to historically advantaged institutions and individuals. We therefore need to figure out how to, how to increase the number of applications from and awards to um, HBUs and HDIs in the country, and um, there are local and international efforts to shift the center of gravity for um, 
in terms of African research, but we're not really in the game as Africa because even those efforts to a large extent are being funded from outside. And I think one of the key things we need to start thinking about is how do we start to change this? Thank you very much.